Hey class, it's Bill Berry with the final video in the week 4 demo. We have done everything we needed with our uh, application this week. We created our pizza class, we looked at the UML, created a UML diagram and looked at what all of its pieces were, and we implemented it. But the interesting thing is we have yet to actually make one single real pizza object. We have the class, but as you know, a class is an idea until you actually instantiate it and look at it. You, you really haven't done the whole thing. So what we'd like to do is do some testing on our our code. Uh, as, as part of our development, you want to think of that as being an integral part of your development process. And so a very easy way to do that is you want to create a public method for that, and we want to create a static method for that so that we can test it from the outside. And I'm just going to call it test, right? So nothing too exciting about its name. Now the test method uh, we make a static method, but it's interesting that what we're going to do is we'll be instantiating pizzas and doing our testing of our methods from inside here. So it may seem a little odd that we didn't go to main or go to some create some other class to use the pizza. We could do that, but this is a great place to do it in here and just have the code ready-made and sitting next to it. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a little banner because I want to be able to know that the uh, you know when the tests start and stop. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to paste in uh, just a you know a thing that says a couple of spaces and I'm going to show you any failures below this line. The first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to test the constructors. Right, so we're going to literally go down down the line testing everything that this can do. Uh, now one thing that I, I want to say as a disclaimer is uh, we didn't have any preconditions here where we threw errors and in the in the last week's video I did in the unit testing <clears throat> area I did show you how to do that and so if you have preconditions on your objects you certainly want to test those preconditions and you expect those errors and print error messages if they don't happen again see the week three video on testing uh, to see how to do that so the first thing we have to do is we have to actually have a pizza in hand right we have to actually make a pizza so far we've just talked about pizzas so in this case we say what is the class name what is the object gonna, or the variable name going to be well it's going to be test pizza and what is it it's a reference to a pizza object remember uh, that all objects are reference types right and then just creating that if we do that we're not really done because we have created an object reference but we aren't pointing to an actual object so how do we do that well we say new and then we say what is the object type and it is a pizza or what is the class name and so let's just test the empty constructor so if we do that how can we test that that did the right thing well I can certainly say if the test pizza's type, right? You always use this notation, which is the object itself. The object is test pizza, and I want to get its type. Now, notice I can, or I, instead of using type, I want to say get type, right? Because I actually want to test the methods, right? Okay, so I can say test pizza dot get type, and I call the get type method, and then I say if it's not what? Well, we said the default should be pizza type pepperoni. If you look at the object, the UML class diagram, it says this, and if you look at, at, uh, at our code, hopefully we did the right thing. This is one of the reasons why writing the testing first is sometimes a good idea, because we actually uh, don't want to be tainted by the code at this point at all. We don't want to look back and see what we did in the code necessarily. We want to look at the spec and see what we're supposed to get. And if we look at our object diagram, it says that the default should be pepperoni why I don't know but that's what we made up alright so we could certainly say this and then we say if that happens right if it's not equal to pepperoni we want to do system dot out dot print len and I'm gonna say get type failed expected pepperoni got and then I'm gonna concatenate on the actual type so test pizza dot get type right so that way if I have an error I not only know what what it, we expected to find but what we actually found it might make it a little bit easier to diagnose so then we can do that and then let's see come to the end of that end of the line here and then we can certainly put our close and then we can go on and do the same thing for type or for get uh, size 
Now the only problem with this is these brackets are going to make this get very very long and again um, this is a, a rare time when I know I'm doing a million things or I'm doing an if statement with only one thing in the block so I'm going to relax my own rules a little bit and say look uh, for this section, not for my production code, for my test code, I'm just going to do this and I'm going to get rid of this extra bracket. I'm just going to do these as one line blocks because they're all going to look the same and frankly this code is going to get really long and really complicated and this actually I think works because they'll all be parallel but again you have to have a really good reason to relax your coding rules. Now this is one that I think makes sense and again I put it on the same line because this might confuse me right I might come and add a second line in there thinking it's going to be part of the if and it would not be. So this is uh, I think okay in this particular case but be careful careful when you decide to uh, to you know do something like this. Uh, be careful that you really can justify it and you're not doing it just because you're lazy or something like that. Pizza size you can see is going to be the same thing, right? Get size. If it's not large, do the thing. Now crust gets more interesting, right? Because you might be tempted to say something like this. Get thin crust equal equal uh, right? Because you want to say if it's if it's um, thin crust, uh, it should be false by default. So if it is true, then we have an error, right? Then we have a problem. You might be tempted to do that, but that's a rookie thing, right? If you say a uh, boolean equal equal true, that's that's a rookie move because booleans are already true or false. You don't compare them to true or false. You just say if you have this condition, right? If get thin crust yields true. And then you can put the rest of the thing in there, and that makes perfect sense, right? So booleans. That's why one of the reasons I included the boolean here, so that we could talk about the fact that you know booleans uh, look a little different sometimes in code, and we want to uh, observe that. So we can certainly have that same thing. Okay. And then uh, the next one that's interesting is we want to do the special instructions. So uh, one of the things we're going to want to do here is we're going to have to do get pizza, get special instructions but this is a string, right? So we can't do this and in fact uh, saying not equal to uh, blank, right? This this turns out not to work because remember as we talked about with string objects uh, the way that you test for equality is a little different and in fact uh, we have a method on strings that is actually very easy to use and that is is empty, right? So we say in this case this returns whether that string is an empty string the, this is going to be a problem though because we actually want when it, if it's not empty because we expect it to be empty by default. So we got to put a negation in front of it. We got to put a not in front of it. So this says if the special instruction string is not empty. Ponder that for a second uh, in case that's uh, in case that's odd to your brain because it does look a little bit odd at first. But that's a good way to test uh, special instructions, right? Okay, so the we're going to test the empty constructor, and that worked. Uh, that should work fine. Now we're going to want to go and run this thing as we go along, in case we're making mistakes that we end up copying and pasting or replicating. So I'm going to compile it, and I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to come and test, run our test method. Now. Failures will be shown here. Well, that's great, except I don't trust it, right? And now I'm in a tester mentality. I don't trust the thing, so I'm actually going to go and make something that I think is incorrect to make sure that the whole mechanism is actually working, because I don't trust it. So I'm going to go and force an error, and I say, ah, get size failed, expected large, got, oops. Well, I've got a problem there. So, um, uh, yeah, expected large, got large, because I didn't change the text underneath. But that's okay, all right? That's that's not a problem. So I know that uh, I know that the thing is at least working, and I'm not just getting uh, you know bad bad data out. So you want to seed some errors and make sure it actually works. Now uh, I'm going to do the same thing with the other constructors, right? I've got three constructors. I'm going to want to write tests for all three of those guys. So I'm going to come to the end of this line. I'm going to add some space, and I'm going to paste in some constructors. Right? And each one of those is going to test one of the constructors. And notice I'm going to pass different things just for fun. I try pepperoni, I try cheese, I try veggie, I try the different sizes, etc. Just to give me some variety. And all of these things are going to run those tests and I'm going to get the results. 
Now the mutators are actually pretty easy to test. So I think you can see, hopefully, uh, if, you, if you think about it, that uh, the mutator tests are going to be very, very straightforward. So if I come down here and paste these things in, I hope that you're not shocked when you see I'm going to set type to pepperoni because I left it at veggie up here, and then make sure it's still pepperoni. Set size to medium, get size, make sure it's medium set thin crust to, to false because I had it true up here and then verify it. So I'm going to test all of those mutators to make sure that when I ask it to change something it actually does the internal change and echoes it back when I do the gets. Now the other one that's interesting is I have already tested a lot of a lot of the accessors but maybe I want to uh, I want to test a couple others that I haven't yet hit so for instance I haven't done set size Right, so here I may want to come and say set size to small and then I'm going to go do the work to calculate what I think the area should be and then I'm going to test to make sure that's right. Again, your test code should assume you, you haven't really seen the other code. So you could have written this before you did the other thing at all. So this says, look, I'm independently going to calculate the area and then I'm going to compare it and then I'm going to print an error message if it's not true. Now this is one of those cases where if a slightly different calculation method had been used you might need to round the two to compare them but in this case um, you know if you find that it works then you know then it's it's fine. And so you're going to do that for all of the sizes right or for all of the different accessors so I'm gonna in this case because the diameters are actually going to be different I don't I don't trust that I can just do one. I actually think I need to do all the sizes and make sure that small, medium, large, and extra large all have the right diameters because I'm, I'm you know, the code is going to rely on constants and other things like that, so I'm not really exactly uh, going to believe it until I try them all. So a little more testing is better than a little too little testing. Then I'm going to have a little message that says, hey, I'm done with this thing. Right? I've finished the unit tests on the pizza class and now I'm just going to dump the two string results because it's I could test that they are exactly what I want but you're going to tweak that a lot and so just to say hey look I'm going to dump the two string of the last remaining pizza and I'm going to let you check it out because I think that's easier to just visually manual, uh, manually verify it. So now what we're going to get is a whole bunch of testing done and we're going to right click and we're going to say do the testing. Now I'm going to clear it because you know I want to get a really clear test run. There we go. So the test started, failures will be shown here. We got nothing. All right, so no failures came out. And then here's the two string results. We get the type, XL. Notice these uh, these enums were so nicely coerced into strings. That's great. We got the size. We got thin no. We'll want to go verify that, that that's actually where we left the last pizza, but I think that's correct. And the last special request was extra pepperoni. So we now have tested all of our methods. We want to go back and think very carefully. Again, if you have preconditions, you have to do some try-catch stuff. And you want to really think hard whether you've done everything, everything that it was supposed to do, every little, every little piece of behavior that you expect this code to have, have you tested it? And, and uh, I think we've done a reasonable job here of doing unit testing. So that's important. Again, some people would write that first and then write the class later and you'd be smarter about writing your class and you might, uh, you might not miss some things that you missed the first time through. The other thing is, remember, it's easier to test what you see and harder to test for things that are missing. That's why it's important to go back to the spec and as you're doing your testing, think from the requirements from the user perspective or the consumer right, of the, of the class we're providing, what they expect to see here. So don't always just think about what's there, think about what the requirements were. That brings us to the end of our demo for this week. There was a lot of stuff, a lot of great information about creating objects and understanding how they work and about testing them. So I hope that was really useful to you. So that brings us to the end of this demo. Thanks for watching. Send questions in forums or email if you have them. And we'll see you in next week.